I finally get to show you the project that I've been working on for the past few months. I'm excited to catch you up. We're getting close to putting steel on it. Right now, I'm just gonna sh give you an overview of what you're gonna be seeing in this build series. But basically, I'm building a pole barn. It's going to be 42 foot wide. It's gonna be 50 long, and it's gonna have a 12 foot lean-to on it with a 38 foot door up front for the airplane. And obviously. Certain things about this pole barn, I'm not just throwing out the regular pole barn out back. I want to make this thing energy efficient. I want it to kind of be self-sustainable in ways. I'm using practices that are used in like your off-grid homes. Uh, so you'll see some of those installations in this video and then later on we'll see if they actually work. So that, that will be exciting um, just because it's completely different that you don't see. I want to make it look nice. I'm putting rock up front. I'm putting wood on it. I want to give it like a modern rustic look. So that'll be exciting to see how it all turns out. I'm using standing seam. It's actually a textured standing seam. So that's kind of cool. Uh, other than that, it's a, uh, oh, we're not using any equipment. Well, you need like a, a crane or a jib, you know, something to get the, the trusses up. Now, when I hit up my buddy Titus from TR4 Construction, he actually was like, yeah, you don't need a, rent, uh, a lift or anything. We just, we Amish them up, <laughs> is what he said. And I was like, huh, okay. So that's kind of cool for you guys to see. Uh, we don't use any equipment in it. I think it's gonna be a really nice building. I get to bring you guys along for the whole build. Hope you enjoy this build series. So that's, that was just a little overview of what you're gonna be seeing. Get into it. Well, that was pretty cool. Golden Eagle just flew over my head. You can kind of see him now. I wish he would come back. He was massive. Anyways, he's uh, giving me a good omen on my pole barn build that I'm starting right now. Uh, my buddy TJ is coming over with his backhoe. We're gonna move these two uh, trees, and then we're gonna stake this thing out and uh, start the whole whole process. I'm done with sheep. Right, guys really quickly I'm sure some of you are like what are you doing with this giant tank and what does this have to do with this pole barn I mentioned earlier that I'm trying to make this pole barn energy efficient kind of heat itself and this is kind of one of those practices this tank is going to be a storage tank for the water for the in-floor heat basically the bigger the tank the more hot water I have to heat that floor throughout the night or through cloudy days. And this will be heated through a solar system. So cross my fingers, it's, it's all experimental, but I am excited to see how it works. So that's what I'm doing with this tank. This sucks. It'd be really nice if this tank I bought was uh, not rusted inside. <laughs> but it's okay. I got it for a good deal. Before we continue the pole barn build, we have to say thank you to the sponsor of this video. Mudwater. Mudwater is a coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. Want the ritual of your morning coffee without anxiety, jitters, or crash? With one-seventh of the caffeine of a cup of coffee, you get energy and can drink mud all day without impacting your sleep. We personally like to drink mud in the morning with our favorite rice milk. 
So Mudwater kindly sent me their starter kit, which includes a 30 serving tin of mud, USB rechargeable frother, and a free sample of their vegan coconut creamer. Mud includes ingredients such as cocoa, chai, lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, which offer a huge range of benefits, including helping your mood, focus, physical performance, and your immune system. And it's 100% USDA certified organic and non-GMO. Try Mud Water today. Get 15% off your starter kit by clicking the link in my description box and using code Marcinko. Thank you, Mud Water, for sponsoring this video. Oh. All right, now that I got the tank all sealed up, Titus is helping me do a rough layout. I need to see exactly where I'm gonna be putting the tank because I'm gonna be putting it in between the two poles. I'm digging it out to get to the right grade because the top of the tank, I want to be flush or just a little bit below grade of concrete. So here you're seeing me put the two by fours around the perimeter of the tank. This is so I can wrap it with foam and then I'm actually going to put concrete between the foam and the tank and the concrete will actually add as a heat sink also uh, to try and keep that water warm for a longer period of time. Really quickly, I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. I'm putting in earth tubes. How these earth tubes work is if you go down six feet into the earth, you have a consistent temperature of 50 degrees, and then we're going to go over 100 feet and then back up to say 90 degree temperature outside. And we're gonna suck air through this tube. The idea is that over that 100 feet, it actually cools that air down to the 50 degrees and you get a nice cool 50 degrees entering your building. Now this also works in the winter time to where if this was 20 degrees outside and you pull it through this 100 feet, it will heat it up to 50 degrees and then you have a 50 degree temperature entering your building. So I'm excited to try it out. I don't know, it's all experimental. There may not be enough. I'm only putting two in. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it works. Some of you might be thinking why I'm not using metal stakes. I thought I would use metal stakes at first too, and then my uh, my friend told me, actually wood holds better versus the metal, which makes sense. It's a little bit thicker, more earth to grab onto. So using wood stakes, yeah, a little tip. The baseline, and then we're gonna square everything off of this. Now that we have the pad to grade, we have the earth tubes in, we have the tank water tank in, we're able to do the final squaring and measuring of the building and put marks on the ground where we're going to be digging holes for the poles. Since this building does have a lean-to, we actually square out the entire footprint first and then you square out the building itself after. <laughs> All 
All right, it's digging time. Let's see what I can do. See how square I can make these holes. Basically cleaning up the holes, I double check to see if the holes are somewhat in the center. That way when we go to put the poles in, they're nice and centered in the hole and we're just not like close to one edge or the other. So that's uh, what I've been doing now and I'm basically, uh, yeah, cleaning all this dirt out by hand and just making it, making it perfect. We uh, squared it out again just to make sure. It's looking pretty freaking primo. So I'm excited. Are you ready? Set. 